Hello fellow book people! Uh, tonight, because it is indeed night, I am coming to you with a review of uh, The Man with the Getaway Face. It's uh, Donald E. Westlake writing as Richard Stark in uh, the number two in the uh, Parker series. Uh, Parker is a master thief, uh, ruthless, cold, efficient bastard who who will kill uh, when, he when he needs to. Um, this book, basically, the last book, he got in a, a quite a bit of a trouble with the syndicate, the outfit, basically organized crime, and uh, needs to sort of disappear. So he goes to a crooked surgeon uh, and has plastic surgery to get a, I guess, a getaway, a getaway face. Um, gets a face, gets warned. You try to do anything to the doctor, um, we'll come after you, and we'll we'll take away your, we'll take away that face of yours. Um, this is by his man, uh, Stubbs, uh, kind of a punch drunk, kind of brain damaged fellow, but very dogged. Um, he goes off, he ho rehooks up with some associates, uh, who one of them, uh, brings him, brings him a job. Of course, with that job, there's always somebody in the crew that, you know, is just, he doesn't, is, is the weak link and, you know, he doesn't trust and it figures is going to double cross him. And that indeed seems to be the thing of, of Parker is this such kind of capable and, uh, a really efficient guy. I mean, a part of the kind of the pleasure of these books is while Parker is completely immoral, basically just he's, he's doing crime to get money to live, to, to live how he wants to, to live outside of all systems. I mean, a part of why he got in trouble with the, the outfit at the thing was, is like basically it was a corporation and they wanted him to become like a middle manager. And he was like, this is like, this is, I think is, is a part of the wish fulfillment is he is, is Parker just said, screw that and took apart the organization until he got what he wanted. Uh, and then he had to, he had to buzz off. But even, even that, even living on the fringes in this, in this criminal world where everyone's like, you know, really out for themselves and stuff like that. Uh, he still has to have kind of assemble crews to kind of pull jobs. And, uh, in this case, usually he's kind of, he'll be, he'll, he can be pickier, but uh, he's really knocked back. He's um, from the events of the first book. He's all his money's cleared out. He needs to get money. He has to. He has to take this job, and does take it. And you know, he he figures there's this what there's a, the person who's brought the job to them is this Alma, who is a, a really kind of a a, a sour um, kind of sour waitress who's who's basically uh, kind of riding roughshod over. Uh, the, the 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 guy he knows um in a kind of a very way of like it's interesting this is a 1963 book and it's very much there's a there's a thing there's kind of the implication of oh his friend is not particularly that masculine because he's letting alma call all the shots and she's the one in in charge and he's definitely obviously the submissive in the re re the relationship um and these are just definitely books about dominance and masculinity and and you know how they do uh, indeed uh, as in this book uh, i've read i've read the first book the hunter and i also i started off with the black ice score which was number 11 in the series and that actually i really enjoyed that and as with all these books now they all seem to stand on their own um but there's always like an appearance of uh, like a gay character in these books as basically kind of the the dark disquieting other of something that you know needs to get beat beaten back and usually gets usually the gay man gets punched in these things if not worse um which is it's it's the it's the expression of this kind of 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 this kind of masculinity but it's also something where i find um i find just so the 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 individualism the 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 ruthless uh efficiency the how good Park, how good Parker is at his job is is something that quite draws me draws me into these stories and indeed um, form follows function in these books these are you know these are books that are written written in 1963 and they're short books they're the, I can't remember how many hours I, I I listened to this on audio and I think it was like about five or six hours on audio so quite a short thing uh, read very capably by uh, John Chancer and um, who does a really great Parker voice. It's like, oh, he's like, Parker's voice is just like, yeah. He's like, this is a guy you do not want to meet in the alley. You'd freaking, you'd crap your pants and then he'd probably kill you or, you know, just break a couple of your limbs for whatever, whatever they need, whatever need he had. But it's, it's, um, these books have that, they're, they're, so they're written very lean and tight and it's like, it's a driving plot and it's like, it fits the character. 
you know, Parker is a, as efficient, no nonsense. He gets his job done and he's going to get out of there. He's going to get the job done. He's going to get his money and he's going to, and he's going to get out of there. And then he's going to go off and his off time. You're not going to get off a, 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 I, I doubt very much if you're going to get a Parker novel where he's like off the clock. These are all, he's on the clock. He's got a job to do. We're going to get in and out and that's, that's it. And so the, I think a part of, um, it's, his character fits this very kind of clipped, uh, kind of Elmore Leonard kind of philosophy of, you know, you cut out all the boring parts. You, you just, you have the action. You have short, sharp, uh, descriptions, uh, in the books. Um, there's also something about the kind of, um, the indifference of this world. This is not a world that has, uh, a God in it, a spirituality in it. Uh, this is, like, you know, all the people that you meet in this world, everyone is out for themselves. There's a meanness, there's, there's a selfishness. And a part of that is just privation. Like, you know, this is not a middle class world where, where people can be polite or can be, um, the, or, or, or can kind of, you know, pretend to, pretend to care about each other. Um, which, and I mean, this is obviously also a cynical thing because I know a lot of, uh, some, some of the kindest people that, I, I, I have kind of encountered in my life are people who are actually, you know, are actually kind of hard off themselves, but actually do make a point of, of reaching out and, 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 uh, caring, caring for others. But this is not this point of view. This is a point of view. This is a world. This is a very stripped back bare world where no one gives a shit about anyone else. And Parker is striding through this world and he doesn't give a shit about anyone else. And, um, he'll kill, he'll kill. Uh, if you get in his way, he's learned, he's learned through the course of the first book that you don't kill because of impatience. You kill because of necessity. Um, but that said, like, you know, just the final images, of this book is just brutal. Um, there's, there's a sense of, uh, if you've read the books of Patricia Highsmith, the talented Mr. Ripley, which is a out and out, uh, psychopath, also, a uh, I wonder if I referenced him before, but cause like I Ripley and, pa and Parker are, are, are so, are somewhat, are somewhat uh, akin to each other. Um, maybe shadow selves of each other because I'm sure Parker would be quite disturbed by, um, Ripley who is obviously, um, is not obviously, but it has, is, is, is also, uh, somebody who's kind of, who, who's, who's gay. I'm sorry. My, my doodles decided, Shira, what are you doing? Shira here. Shira, Shira cares. No, I don't, John. I don't care at all. I, Jay, I don't care at all. I always want to get back to what I'm doing. Okay. All right, all right. I care about my little doodle. Probably means Parker would punch me. Okay, that, that that's a complete dis digression, but yes, lovely, lovely little dog. All right. So yeah, so it's it's. <laughs> Let me get back to the spiritual barrenness of this world and the just lack. And I, I mean, I don't know if that's something that particularly, um, I think, I mean, there is a part of that. There's just like, this is just, it, it gives you the kind of the, the feel of this world. It's just, it's, it's, it's barren. It's, 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 there's a, a certain emptiness to it, which is filled with work, uh, which is sort of an interesting kind of a, a God, is there a kind of a capital? comment on capitalism in this book i guess like you know i was talking about you know parker doesn't want to be a middle manager but he's somebody who's like driven by work uh and indeed there's a sort of a thing of like you know he is so driven by work that it sucks out all his uh, sexual libido and that only kind of springs back up after a job uh which is a very a fascinating thing i mean these are just i i you know the books have a kind of a certain kind of a repetition to them uh they you know it's interesting, like you get the, you get it from Parker's perspective for, for a good hunk. And then there's a, there's a, there's a part where it would be from somebody else's perspective. And then we'll suddenly switch back to Parker, which will then kind of tail it, Parker's, Parker's story will then tail around to the end of where that first section was. So there's a, there, there is, a, you, I can see, I'm, I would be interested to see how that goes along, but there seems to be a certain kind of a formula for these books. Indeed, if I think about book number 11, book number 11 followed the same sort of formula. So the, they're formulaic, they're genre books, but they also have, they, they're also kind of capturing kind of a very kind of a cynical, hard uh, point of view and a kind of a almost sort of some kind of a 
feels like sort of a criticism of uh of a um a meaning blasted world where everybody's just out for gain of that kind of capitalist gain and this isn't like the 60s where you could consider it like kind of the flush flush kind of happy hippie happy hippie 60s of of like you know kind of post war but no that you know this is also it's film noir where it's 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 blasted you know that's the that that that, that kind of sense to it so yes that is that's my that's my enjoyment of of uh, the man with a getaway face and indeed I will be going on to book number 3 at some point uh the I think it's the outfit so yes that's you know whatever 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 response I can conjure up there uh, at late late at night and god now it's time to have my snack and go to bed all right more videos later